Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. Today we have a lot of awesomeness to go over with you, as always. We got some Fallout 4 stuff, some George Lucas information with Star Wars, Dark Souls, of course, for Mr. Nine, uh, Samsung, Sony, all that kind of thing. So we'll talk about all that here today. Uh, my name is Will, and uh, with us as always is Nine. Yep. And we have Mr. Jeremiah here with us. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. So guys, let's get started. Um, so Fallout 4, uh, I think we gave that game of the year at... Uh, game of show. Game of E3. show, sorry, uh, at, uh, at E3. And rightfully so, I think we made a good decision there. It was, uh, it's an amazing game, everybody's playing it. And um, what do you guys think so far? You've both played it. I can't stop playing it. Yeah? Yeah, same here. It's basically all I've been thinking about lately. It's crack. It's like a drug. It's taken over. And that's pretty much on par with the Bethesda release, though. Yeah. I mean, Skyrim did the same thing. Mm -hmm. People played it, they rented it, and then they went out and bought it because they didn't want to stop playing it. Yeah. So it's just, it's the Bethesda phenomenon. So And they only put out a Fallout every, when did Fallout 3 come out? 2008. Yeah, so it's been a little while. Yeah. A long time. It's been a little while. 2008. Is that right? Yeah, because it yeah, came out before my son was born. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, this dropped. People have been looking forward to it for a long, long time. One of the things that comes out of these games are mods. So, yeah, for those nine, for those people that aren't familiar at, uh, on, on the interwebs or on listening on the radio, what exactly is a Fallout mod? Uh, well, mods in general are usually explicit to, uh, not explicit, um, exclusive to PC games. Uh, it's where they take code from the game, usually like a, a graphic or a texture or something, and change it with something custom that they've made themselves or found from somewhere else to replace what it currently exists in the game. So sure. for example, in Skyrim, people took the dragons and turned them into Macho Man Randy Savage. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> that was hilarious. It's one of the funniest mods ever. So now they're taken and they've got free roam with the customization of the guns. They can make their own custom guns for the game. Um, you'll be able to change like character um, outfits. And the, the possibilities are endless. And not to mention the fact that they're bringing mods to both PS4 and Xbox One as well. So there's, there's uh, apparently six mods that are available now already. Um, for people to play. How do, how do people go about playing these and how do they show up on consoles? How does it work? There's no word on how it's going to work on consoles yet. It's going to be a little bit before they activate mods on consoles, but the PC ones, it's just a matter of literally changing the files, backing up the original files, and running your new files from your folder, your, your install folder. I assume that through Xbox One and PS4, there will be some sort of in game store to go and browse through the different mods yeah it's probably going to be just like going to the microsoft store or the psn store or something like that you'll have a, a catalog of things you can browse through and then you'll hit install and then it'll probably they'll have some kind of in-game thing that they come up with to do it would you like to activate this mod? right absolutely i don't think it's going to be as robust on the consoles as it will be on I the pc i think they'll limit some of the stuff right through a through a filter kind of thing sure. like they won't give all the naked nude stuff to the console owners <laughs> because there's already a nude female skyrim or uh, fallout mod which is i'm sure i mean it so, all, it only takes a little time you yeah know? I mean, so, by the way, you're watching listen to press start tv. I'm Will, this is nine. This is Jeremiah. Go. So on all these mods, I mean, is this are some of these for the better? Do we think, or it's just a change the game? Joke? It, just a, a lot of them are a joke. Like yeah. again, Skyrim is a perfect example. You had the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Why Dragon Macho Man? Just because it was so random. It, <laughs> it was random, and it was right after he passed away that it happened. Mm. So it was almost a tribute. Yeah, it yeah. was almost a tribute. Um, and then you get stuff like the crabs in Skyrim. Somebody changed them out to be Zoidberg from, uh, <laughs> from Futurama, which was hilarious because they even do the whoop, 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 whoop as they, as they walk. Um, there's a lot of people do custom armor. Yeah. And a lot of the custom armor is really, really yeah, good. Yeah, that's cool. It doesn't really change the stats. They just change the appearance so right. it looks cooler. So there, there's those possibilities. Then so, I mean, are there any, like, copyright infringements or any of that kind of thing? Or do you know? There are some things... 
there's always some red tape with pretty much anything. Yeah, yeah there's always red tape. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that you won't see on the consoles at right. all, I don't think. The, you know, the, there's gonna there's always like an underground mod scene when it comes to PC games, and then there's like the Steam community and the and the, yeah, the Forge community and all that stuff. Where you get into weird stuff. But a lot of times, what you'll see on especially on PCs when it comes to mod is uh, you'll get increased resolution and textures so things look nicer yeah, or cool. they'll replace so you, in that case for the better right and they'll replace tree <clears throat> models and things like that so to make things more random right and throughout the wasteland must be pretty cool to just come up with an idea and just pop it into your one of your favorite games and just <laughs> absolutely have it have it be oh, yeah. in there um, so what are some games what other games are uh, is there any good console mods that are out there I mean other than like the old school NES games where people I'm sure you have seen that where like dude asked his uh, wife to marry him through spelling oh, out yeah, will you yeah. marry me with coins he reprogrammed the code yeah. for the Mario cartridge to ask his wife to marry him it's not a, as prevalent it's not a real big thing on um, consoles it's not really a thing at all I mean, I've seen it on the retro I mean, stuff before. Yeah, but, but not, like the current that. generation consoles, it's not really a thing. Fallout is kind of like paving the way for that. Yeah. So I'm hoping Bethesda keeps this trend, and I hope that it works out for the better, and other companies see this and start to roll with it too. I mean, I don't know if they want to encourage people messing with their games or not, but. Well, they're not really messing with too much. They're just making a copy of a file and renaming it to match the same thing in the game, yeah. and just backing everything up. Well, there you go. So look out for those uh, Fallout 4 mods uh, coming. Uh, some are out now. I'm sure lots more will come out here soon. Uh, when we get back, we'll be talking about George, George Lucas whining about Star Wars and, and some other stuff when we get back. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we just got to talk about Fallout 4 mods, uh, some, some cool stuff to look out for there. Um, so apparently in the news, George Lucas, we'll, we'll switch gears here a little bit. Uh, well, uh, by the way, my name's Will, this is Nine, Yo. this is Jeremiah. So um, I guess he's just, uh, George Lucas has uh, been out just kind of whining. He's being Stop a giant whining. Tool. Stop whining. <laughs> he's being a giant tool. That's what he's being. What's he upset about? Star Wars. I mean, why? I just don't <laughs> I get don't, it. I mean, that doesn't. I don't know. Well, what's he? What's his? What's his? Well, deal? I, I think mean, uh, one of the sh one of the things I was reading about was that he's just. Uh, he was talking about how hard it was to make the original, the, the new, the one, two, three trilogy. Okay. Um, with the, there was so much pressure around it, and it seemed like for him, all he ever got was criticism. Like nobody ever was like, you know what, George. Not Good job. I mean, so, some of the uh, actors that he originally approached didn't want anything to do with it. They thought it was going to bomb. Thought, didn't think it was going to be anything. And man, were they wrong. So good for him. And especially way back then. It was it the 70s, right? Well, no. I was talking, talking about, about episodes, episodes 1, 2, and 3. Oh, episodes 1, 2, Not and 3. Not episodes yeah. 4, 5, and 6. The first 4, 5, ones, and 6, that was a whole different story. That was struggle. a whole different That's thing. a whole different story. Yeah. yeah. But it came to be. And then, yeah, episodes 1, 2, and 3 aren't as well received. And... I guess people now he's but everybody's on board with this new one and he's upset about it. Yeah, he's like, why do why do they get all the, you know, the attention and stuff when yeah. everyone's getting singing praises about it and you know. I he's personally kind of like, liked three. Uh, I thought it was great. Of the three, that of was the, the best three. one. I like the last. Well, the first half of, the first third and the last third of part three were good. Everything in the middle was just kind of... Okay, fair enough. But um, Baloney. I, I thought it was a good movie. Baloney. And then the <laughs> second one, I liked the end of it where Yoda was jumping around. I thought that was great stuff. Yeah, but... And the first it's one, just I... not Yoda to me. You know, Yoda's but, this Well, it wasn't creepy, to anybody. That's what was so great about it. He's this creepy little old green guy that just hobbles around He's with still, like, one of the on best back. Jedi ever. I was watching Empire the other night, and it's funny that even after all this time, I know that that thing is a puppet. I know it. But you still can't... I believe it, though. Yeah. You know, I, I look at it even on the screen. Frank Same Oz R2. is crazy. You know there's a small person inside of R2, but you're just like, I believe that's a robot. Yeah. <laughs> that's a real robot. So... Testament to them and what they accomplished way back when, but definitely. Um, and then the first one, I actually like. I thought the whole Darth Maul thing was cool at the end. Darth Maul was the only like saving grace for the first movie, yeah. and he died way too quick. I agree with that. I as think well. Darth Maul should have been through all three movies. Yeah, great character. Um, <laughs> anyway, he's complaining that 
I guess it's getting so much praise. I mean, it's only one of the biggest franchises ever in They're history. They're praising Disney and J.J. Abrams for actually making a movie worth watching. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, well, George, we love you. If you're watching, I'm sure you are. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, Nine, let's talk about one of your most beloved franchises ever in history, uh, the Dark Souls series. Yes. Apparently, Miyazaki has decided that he doesn't want to make any more of these games, I guess. Or he's just done I don't for think now, that he or? doesn't want to make any more of these games. I think he feels that this is the time to close it off and leave it where it's at. Like, the story's done. Don't keep changing it and ruining it, because usually after games hit, like, a certain stride, and too much gets changed from the original, fans start to hate it. So, so I stop it at three, where it's at a nice sweet spot. For Dark Souls, happy. but, I mean, they also did Demon Souls, and they did... Bloodborne. Yeah, but and even internally, did they do Lords of the Soft, Fallen, or is that some? No, Lords of the Fallen is something uh, totally different. Okay. which is still a great game. Yeah, um, if you like Dark Souls, you'll like Lords of the Fallen. But yeah. for them, Demon Souls is its own thing, Bloodborne is its own thing, and Dark Souls is totally separate from both of those. So what what he said, or what what they want to do is a <coughs> new type of game. So I'm thinking that. The style of combat and all that kind of thing, all that's going to go away. He wants he to do something huge, totally different. Okay, Miyazaki is a huge nerd. Like, a okay. huge nerd. He loves everything like anime and he loves everything like sci fi. And he said in like the past interview before Dark Souls 3 was even announced that he's really interested in doing like a sci fi themed RPG. Okay. Well, I'm on board. So, like, yeah. in space, like, trapped on a space station kind of thing. And I, I'm like, this could work. Like, yeah, because this what, could be really awesome. What they're known for is that style of game that has that certain type of combat system. And well, not even, not so much even that because they've also known, they've also did Armored Core. Yeah. For the long longest time, and they haven't done an Armored Core game in a long, long time sure. now. I think the last one was on PS3. Right. Six or whatever it was. By the way, watch and listen to Press Start TV. I'm Will. This is Nine. This is Jeremiah. Yep. Um, so I, I mean, yeah. And they did Steel Battalion. Yeah. So they've done other things beside the fantasy world. Talking about FromSoft? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see if they actually do a full-on sci-fi game. I'll so, buy it regardless. Something different. Yeah, I mean, it, his words were a new type of yeah. game. So I don't think we'll see so. like a RPG-style combat. I think we'll see more like a tactical strategy kind of combat. And you know, good for him for not trying to just milk a franchise right. to death. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the thing that people are starting to really fall in love with as m new, more and more fans or more and more gamers are getting a hold of these games is just they know that when that game comes out, they can get a lot of gameplay out of it because it's a little more challenging than your average game. Good story, good level design. I mean, really deep th stories. Th they're, they're really doing some good stuff. Um, although I will say I beat Bloodborne and I got the true ending and I don't really know what happened. <laughs> so something happened and you turn into something and that's all I'm gonna say, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little confusing for me. But. I hear that about Metal Gear. Metal Gear is solid five. A lot of people are saying when they get the ending, they're like, I just don't even know. Because Nobody it's so knows. convoluted, so, man. Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid is its own convoluted mess, just like Konami. <laughs> that's it's true. its own convoluted mess. But I will say, in the state of things, Konami is in disarray, right? But Metal Gear is an amazing game. It sure is. It, it yeah, is oh, yeah. They did a great job. Great series. It. I still haven't finished it, but I'm enjoying it. So coming soon, we will be talking about our game of the year, and I guarantee you that's a, a, a contender for, for us. So when we get back, we're going to talk about Samsung's new Oculus Gear VR for mobile phones and Sony, uh, Sony news right after when we get back. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Um, we are back to talk about Samsung's new Gear VR or Gear VR 2, whatever they're calling I'm not really it. I'm not sure don't... which one it is. <laughs> we think we it's Gear debate. VR. Um, we'll just go with Gear VR. And um, on our last segment, we were talking about uh, George Lucas whining. So go back and listen to that. That was great. Um, okay, so again, my name's Will. <coughs> this is Nine. Yeah. This is Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Um, what do you? So this is basically the Oculus for gaming is is in production. There's games coming out and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Releases like spring of next year. Yeah, but what's out right now is the, the this, this Gear VR from Samsung, and it's um, it's basically like a it's a it's Use a headset. Your mobile phone. It's like a yeah. Mega Man helmet. Kind yeah, of sort of. Much. 
Whether four you, mobile yeah. phones. Yeah. Your Works phone goes the, in it, right? S5, and the Note 5, the yep. S6, and the S6 Edge. And the S6 Edge Plus, I believe. Yeah, so, all that. So, yeah. All the I current mean, line of Samsung flagship. So it's phones. completely proprietary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah this, this. <laughs> but so, I mean, I mean, you can, people can watch Netflix on it, you know, do their thing. Uh, 360. Um, price points of $99. It's out now, actually. I mean, uh, it's cheap. It's not bad. It's not bad, but I, I don't. How much you want, are you, gonna, are you really going to get out of your phone? I don't know. That, that's the, that's the know, question. That's why I brought I, it I up. I played I just, a couple of things at E3, and you know, using the previous generation, which ran on the S4 and the S5, and I, you know, they had some cool stuff, but I wasn't blown away by it, yeah. like the full-blown Oculus and Morpheus that are coming out next year. So, I just we'll see what happens. You think it's just a gimmick? You mean, moment, I mean, here, yeah, kind of like the Gear Watch when it first came well, out. Well, 3D gaming was more than just a gimmick. That was supposed to be a thing. That was supposed to be the next thing. It, even it fell flat. Even uh, currently, I, if you know the state of motion gaming, the Kinect, the Move, those games, they're falling farther and further back, right? I yeah, mean, there's I, not there's a whole lot of production. Not a Move game coming out. There's not a whole lot. I mean, there's a couple games, right? There's some experiences, Just Dance, and all that kind of stuff. But I mean. I just don't know. That's a good question. I, I don't know. I mean, I just don't see a whole lot of people wearing this thing with their phone out and about. No, I mean, they're not because the phone's right here. You can't go anywhere. Phone clips into the front of the thing. The phone is the screen. So are you going to use that at home? I mean, that's the idea. On the, on the, on the Metro? On the Metro? <laughs> Maybe like no. on your way into work? No, because I want to see, you know, you know I'm going to keep an eye on everybody. That kind of thing's going to kill your battery anyway, so I don't think too many people are going to be playing it outside of their home where they can easily charge the phone again. Apparently there's like 25 made for VR games uh, with the launch of this thing, but once again, these aren't massively huge titles. They're just kind of showing you, hey, no. look what we can do, kind of uh, experiences, and I don't know. I, I just, I don't, it's not for me. It's uh, not for me. Not the phone one, at least. Now when the Oculus and the Morpheus release next yeah, now, year, I'm totally on board with this. So, so, by the way, once again, you're watching Listen to Press Start TV. We're talking about the Ooh. Oculus. Uh, Gear VR, which is out now, uh, $99 for mobile users uh, for Samsung. So, but the Oculus, uh, that thing that we experienced at PAX when we got the full demo, we played some E3 stuff too, which is pretty cool. E3, I think I got a better feel for it. Because, because we actually got to play. We got to actually sit down and spend a good bit of time with it. But the tech demo at PAX, I'm telling you, I don't get that was too a cool hyped. Tech demo, dude. <laughs> I don't get too hyped. But there was a dinosaur that looked it looked like it walked into this black. It was like a spotlight, and the dinosaur like walked into the room, uh -huh. and it was standing right there. And it turned and looked at me, and I was just like, I don't want to be in here right now. <laughs> I, I need to go. Because <laughs> it looked like it was, it was right there. It was right yeah. there. And it was you right there. In your face, and you, oh. you look around, and it's like out of camera and focus and whatnot. It's nuts. I wanted to punch, but I was like, it's gonna eat my arm. <laughs> uh, you know. So anyway, um, <laughs> let's talk about some. Do you think he saw us? Yeah, no. <laughs> All right, so Sony, uh, in the light of uh, Microsoft's backwards compatibility, is now saying that they're going to uh, they're in production of fixing a patch, I guess, for the PS4, which allows us to play PS2 games. Supposedly, they confirmed that it's possible to do. Okay. They haven't said that they're going to give it to the public yet. Now, with the PS3, I think you can play all your PS1 games on the PS3s, right? Yeah, that you PS3, just pop a PS1 game into it. The first generation, you could play PS1, PS2, PS3 games. It was fully backwards compatible. That was the fat 60 gig model. Yeah. Then the 80 gig model came out, and it was emulated. That's right. Which is what they're doing with this. They're going to emulate PS2 games through the PS4, yeah. which is the same exact thing that Xbox One is doing with Xbox One. Right. Which is great. I think it's I mean, a good thing. But the the, why not? the PS2 had that emotion chip. You remember that? That was a big deal, and they were talking about the technology of the PS2 at the time. Right. Yeah. And they couldn't. They didn't put that in the PS3s later on, so that's why you couldn't play those games. Play a lot of those games. But um, I think you know PS2 was out for ten years. It was a long. So they were cycle. producing games. I mean, they got a ton of thousands games. of great well, that's titles. what I'm that's what I'm wondering about um, like what games are what gonna, games are, are they gonna do the thing that Microsoft did and they're gonna have like a list like 100. here's a hundred games that are mostly from Microsoft Studios store like are that was all, crap like nice thing about it being PS2 games is they won't be digital download games they'll be full retail release games right because back then you didn't get digital downloaded games you 
put a disc in your system and played your... And that's what it was. That, that's what it was. But is, am I going to be able to take any one of I have some pretty weird PS2 games. Oh, yeah. So I mean, there, there's a lot of left field ones out there, and those are the ones that are near and dear to me. So am I only going to be able to play... This list of games? Yeah. So <laughs> It's just, it's hard to say. I don't know. Man, I think, what wouldn't, I mean, what a huge factor that would be for Sony if they said all of them. I, I would go like this. <laughs> I, I would give them a, a, a good slow clap for that because that, that would be... I was telling Nine earlier, I've, there are PS2 games that I bought after the generation that I still haven't really played because I didn't feel like plugging my PS2 back in. Can you play PS1 games on your PS4? No. no. I tried it. The first day well, I bought it, I tried it. Oh, really? Well, yes and no. They have digital copies that oh, you can sure. download okay. and play. Yeah, but it's all right. not the same. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, so, uh, by the way, you can check out all of our content on PressStartTV.com. Uh, that's our new site where you can check out our interviews, our podcast, this show, and a lot of amazingly awesomeness stuff, uh, if that's even a word. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, until next time, we'll Later. see you.